Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. We'll get started in just a couple minutes while we wait for a few more people to join here. While you're waiting, uh, pull up the chat window um, because uh, if you have any questions, you'll certainly be able to ask them in the chat. I'll watch for your questions. And while you're doing that, maybe let me know where you're calling in from or the type of projects you're working on. So while we wait for a few more people to join, I'll just get my screen shared here so that we're ready to go shortly. Okay, that's the one there. So hopefully you can see my screen. <clears throat> Hello, Richard from Montreal. Good to have you here. Hope you're warm in Montreal. It's cold here in uh, Winnipeg, but it's supposed to warm up here shortly in the next few days. So it's been a pretty mild winter other than uh, one really cold stretch there. So a few more people trickling in. We'll get started in just a minute, right at the top of the hour. And for anyone that's just joined, um, pull up the chat window and uh, just like Richard and Zayad have done, and we can uh, have a chat as we go through the presentation here. All right. So it's right at the top of the hour. We'll get started here right on time. Uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen. And today's presentation is going to be on commissioning project management. So how to use the top rated commissioning software and industry best CSU processes to manage commissioning. So you're going to get my number one framework to manage uh, your commissioning workflows using industry best software and tools for commissioning. So this presentation is meant to be interactive, like um, Richard, Demetrius, Jacob, Zach, good to have you all here. Um, anyone else pull up the chat window. And if you have any questions as we're going through the presentation, by all means, shoot your questions into the chat window. I've got it up here. I'll watch for your questions. We'll get those answered as we go through the presentation. I'll also have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. So if you've got any questions, we can get them answered then. So uh, shoot your questions into the chat or hold them to the end and we'll make sure you get uh, get all your questions ans answered here as we go through the presentation. Now I've used the commissioning project management frameworks that we're going to discuss today on several projects. I've used these commissioning project management frameworks in the power industry, working on hydroelectric generation projects and working on transmission, HVDC transmission projects. I've used these same commissioning project management frameworks in the aerospace industry, building satellites and rockets for the Canadian Space Agency. I've used these frameworks for managing commissioning in the water treatment industry, where we were expanding and upgrading a water treatment facility not too far away from here. I'm also on the organizing committee for the Commissioning Professional Society, where we host an annual event to bring some of the best and brightest commissioning minds together and discuss some of the challenges that are faced in the construction and commissioning industry and how to elevate the importance of commissioning on projects. It's a really good event. Now, I'm not the only one that's getting results with this approach to commissioning. We've helped several others get these same results on projects. For example, Sheldon or Jonald or Kale and many others, after working with us, they all tell me the exact same thing. They tell me that this was an eye opener. They had no idea of everything that's required to properly plan and execute for commissioning. They tell me that this is the first commissioning system they've found that fully matches with what really happens at site. And that's because this is real world experience. This isn't book theory stuff that you can actually apply to projects. This actually helps you get the work done on projects. They all tell me that they knew that they needed commissioning software and a proper commissioning system, but they just didn't know where to start. And we were able to help them get started and get pointed in the right direction with systems that they can actually use on their projects. And you can go to our website at 
commissioningandstartup.com. At the top, there's a link you can click on for success stories, and you can see all the others that we've worked with and how we've helped them on their projects. So I know these processes and tools are great stuff, and they're helping a lot of people on projects, and they can definitely help you on your projects too. So just to be clear, though, this is not technical commissioning. If you're here trying to figure out how to do an electrical high pot test, if you're looking for ASHRAE or NEBB building commissioning, HVAC test and balance, or if you're looking for the specific flushing standards for food grade piping, you're not going to get any of that here. That's not what this presentation is about. But technical commissioning is not actually what's missing on projects, though, is it? There's a lot of smart people working on projects and They'll get the testing completed one way or the other. What's missing on projects is the structure that's supposed to go around the technical commissioning. What's missing is a commissioning system to complete testing as efficiently as possible. So Richard's got a question. Is it for waterfall projects or for hybrid or others? So when we talk about some of those project management terminologies of Agile and Scrum and waterfall, <laughs> None of that really applies to commissioning because commissioning requires a very different approach. It requires a systems-based approach. So while um, Agile or Scrum or those things can apply to design and bulk construction activities, we need to take a different approach for commissioning and we need to be taking a systems-based approach. And I'll explain how that works in this presentation. So let's look at a simple org chart. There's, of course, three main functions that exist on a project, right? We need to get it designed, we need to get it constructed, and we need to get it commissioned. Or if you've got an EPC contract, your design and construction are part of the same group. This all applies as well. There's typically someone to manage the design, and uh, your design manager is following design best practices to coordinate all the disciplines on projects and uh, make sure everything comes together. There's always someone to manage construction. There's an entire industry dedicated to construction project management, right? But where are the project management tools and processes for commissioning? On a lot of projects, they don't even exist. There's a gap in the industry for sure. And commissioning is left to the end of your project for people to scramble and try and figure out later, right? Isn't that pretty typical? And probably using outdated paper and spreadsheet processes to try and track everything. So what do you think happens when the last part of your project commissioning is the most complex part when everything has to start working together as one functional system, when there's no software tools or no commissioning system to manage your project and ensure that everything comes together at the end? Well, there's definitely a gap in the industry and the last 20% of projects often goes unmanaged. And it's no wonder projects are late and over budget when project teams have no system or no commissioning system to finish projects. And no, your spreadsheets to manually track everything are not a system to finish projects. Maybe that used to work 20 years ago, but it doesn't work anymore on today's complex projects. This is the gap that we help you fill. This presentation is for project teams that need a commissioning system to finish projects during commissioning and want to upgrade from outdated paper and spreadsheet processes to better manage their projects more efficiently so that you can complete commissioning as efficiently as possible. And when these systems are in place, you can save time and money on projects. Are we looking at integration here? Yep, that's definitely a key aspect of commissioning that we'll go through for sure. All right. So without a system to complete commissioning, when commissioning is left to the end of your project, or if you're still using paper and spreadsheets on your projects uh, to track everything manually, projects are just gambling. There is no way to control the end of your project during commissioning. It's the Wild West, and all you can do is roll the dice and hope for the best at the end. It's a crapshoot. Let's get that fixed for you. I'm going to show you how with better systems and tools for commissioning, how to use the top rated commissioning software to manage your projects, the industry best processes to follow to de-risk your projects so that you can complete commissioning as efficiently as possible. And at the end of this presentation, if you'd still like some more help getting this set up on your projects, I'll show you how with the services that we offer to give your projects the best chance of success. So if this all sounds interesting, then I'm glad you're here.
I want to share some t statistics with you that are quite concerning. This is Professor Bent Flivberg. He's from the University of Oxford, and he's compiled a database of over 16,000 projects from the last several decades. He's written a book. It's called How Big Things Get Done. And if you haven't read it, you should. It's an excellent book. So Professor Flivberg's research shows that only 8.5% of projects are on time and on budget. That means nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. That's terrible, but that's the track record that the construction industry has. So clearly what's been taking place on projects is not working. <laughs> the complexity of completing projects during commissioning is one of the main contributing factors to delays when there are no systems and controls for commissioning. A lot of projects are still using paper and spreadsheets to manage commissioning because that's the way it's always been done, right? But these, these outdated methods no longer work. And I'm going to show you how to structure your commissioning for success so you can beat these odds and have more success with your projects. So let me know in the chat um, for anybody that's commenting there, what's been your experience on projects? Do these statistics sound familiar? Have your projects been on time and on budget? Or are your projects like most where 90% of them are late and over budget? Shoot some comments in the chat and let me know if you've seen or you agree with some of Professor Bent Flibberg's statistics here and what you've seen on your projects. So to also be clear, there are lots of challenges in the construction industry. And a good book to check out is Built to Fail by Todd Zabel. It's a brand new book. It was released um, earlier this year in January. I read it. It's excellent. And Mr. Zabel talks about all the things that are wrong with the current approach to design and construction. And he also talks about how to fix it with more of a production approach. But just because other phases of projects are messed up doesn't mean that we should ignore commissioning. As described in the book, there are lots of industry experts that are working to fix other phases of the project. They're focusing on design, they're focusing on construction, and we need those industry experts to try and improve those phases of the projects as well. At the Commissioning Academy, we're focused on helping you succeed with the commissioning phase of your project, the most complex part where everything needs to come together so that all groups on projects can work together for project success. So when I do this presentation, first thing a lot of people want to know about commissioning is just tell me what to do. Just give me the checklist or just show me the steps to follow. Just give me the, the six page document that tells me what to do. For example, just, just give me the document. How do I commission an LG plant, for example, or just tell me the best software to use and I'll follow that. And when I hear these questions, I already know these projects are in a lot of trouble because there's a little bit more to it than that. You're never going to find a single document that shows you the steps for commissioning. And you're not going to find that magic software that tells you how to commission your project. It just doesn't exist because each project is different and you need specific processes and tools applied to your project specific circumstances. So first, let's address the problems of what not to do for commissioning before we talk about what to do. We know that projects are having problems. We know this because the data tells us this, that nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. Projects are losing time during commissioning and they're missing deadlines. But why is this? Why are projects struggling with commissioning? We need to address these problems before I can show you what to do for commissioning. So there's two common mistakes that are made on projects. And just by fixing these two mistakes, you can see huge improvements on your projects. So what are these two mistakes? The first mistake is leaving commissioning to the end of projects. We've been told that commissioning takes place at the end of projects. We've heard this for decades, right? Is we need to do the design, we need to finish construction, and then commissioning takes place at the end of the project once it's built. But this is actually absolutely not true. This is, of course, what most projects do, right? Is they roll the dice at the end with their fingers crossed and hope for the best. And I'm sure you've probably had this experience on projects where it's a scramble at the end to try and make everything work. But this is what leads to problems on projects. In fact, to be successful, the commissioning process starts right at the beginning of your project, during your feed processes and during your contract procurement processes when you're setting the rules 
for how your project is going to be executed. And we need to be implementing our commissioning software during our feed processes to manage our entire commissioning process through the duration of the project. When commissioning is left to the end, there's no way to be proactive. All the problems that exist on your project, they're all left to the end of your project and there's no time to recover. There is no systems-based approach to completing your projects and the damage is done before on-site testing even begins. So Ron's got a comment saying, totally agree. Upper management, higher ups, usually focused on just get it done and cannot picture the high value. Yep, uh, it pretty much describes every project, doesn't it? Is uh, scramble at the end to try and figure it out uh, two, three, four years in advance. No foresight to start with the end in mind. Um, Dareth, there seems to be unlimited planning time for a project for me, but every time there's a construction issue, the problem creeps into my commissioning program. Yep, that too, right? And I'll show you how commissioning software can definitely help with that to make sure that the right construction quality items are being met so that we minimize those snags during commissioning because it's certainly an issue. So it's exactly like Stephen Covey, Covey says in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. His habit number two is begin with the end in mind. And we must be doing this on capital projects. We must be implementing commissioning project management processes right from the start of our projects. You must have a clear vision of what your project objectives are right from the beginning of your project, which means you must have visibility and clarity on how to complete your projects during commissioning and startup especially when you're working with such large project teams, right? There's just no way to successfully complete projects unless you have clear objectives at the beginning. It's like that for everything, right? Projects are no different. Imagine getting on a plane without knowing where you're going. You just show up at the airport and get on a, uh, go to a random gate and see where you're going to end up. You'll never get to where you want with this approach. At the highest level, your project objectives, of course, are to deliver high quality systems on time and on budget. And the only way to meet these project objectives is to achieve successful commissioning and startup. Therefore, everything you do on projects, all design activities and all construction activities must be done with the clear objective to successfully complete commissioning and startup. And this is why it's critical to implement structured commissioning processes earlier in your projects so that objectives are clearly defined so that everyone working on your project can see them and understand how their role contributes to successful commissioning and startup. When you keep this information hidden in a spreadsheet or cryptic and people aren't able to understand it, then of course they're going off in different directions because they don't have a vision of what commissioning success looks like. So... When projects do not start with the end in mind, they quickly meander off path with no clear direction on how to get to the end. Uh, I've seen a combination of Primavera, Excel, Punchlist, and Heavy Reliance on those. Uh, yep. So that's the brute force method for sure is you're relying on those commissioning experts, right? But those commissioning experts are getting harder and harder to find. And when you're relying 100% on the people without any process, then it's just brute force to get it done, right? And that... Maybe that worked 20 years ago, but it doesn't work anymore. Um, it's a it's a tough way to get through projects, and it burns a lot of people out with that brute force approach. So the second mistake we see on a lot of projects is projects are still using paper and spreadsheets, exactly like David describes there, right? And um, they're using paper sign-offs, or they've got their custom spreadsheet with their all singing, all dancing Excel macros to try and track everything, and... I've been on projects like this a long time ago, but projects are just far too complex for this. We're in the information age and there are just too many documents and too much information. And it's impossible to keep track of manually in a spreadsheet. It just, things get missed and uh, it doesn't work. We need real-time data to make informed decisions and we can't wait until Friday's spreadsheet update is released to get a status of where things are at. We need access to information now. If we're working on something on a Tuesday morning, we need to know by Tuesday at, at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, is the work actually getting done? Because we've got to reset and plan for Wednesday's activities as well. We can't have that data uh, feedback lag of manually updating spreadsheets. It just doesn't work. Successful project teams are no longer using paper and spreadsheets. And I'll show you what they're using. When projects do use paper and spreadsheets, it's just not an efficient way to complete 
projects and maybe you can track some things with brute force, but your spreadsheets will never give clarity to design and construction groups on what's required for commissioning. And when everyone has a different idea of how to finish projects during commissioning, it's super difficult to complete a project when everyone's going in different di directions and everyone has a different idea of what success looks like during commissioning. And when there's no clear view of what's required for commissioning, Project teams end up spending more time talking about the work rather than actually getting the work done. And um, I think you could agree, we don't need more meetings to talk about the work. We need a better way to organize our teams so we can actually get the job done. When projects make one or more of these two common mistakes, when they leave commissioning to the end, or they're still using paper and spreadsheets to manage commissioning, we call this cowboy commissioning. When projects suffer from cowboy commissioning, the work is just inefficient and you miss your deadlines. Everything is a last minute scramble. Commissioning is incomplete. It's full of snags and systems are just unreliable. You're forced to take uh, shutdowns or unplanned outages during operation because it just wasn't, you didn't go through the systems correctly, sufficiently and, and properly. And you end up with many problems over the life of the facilities that just cost immense amount of lost opportunities and lost money. So there are some good questions so far. Is there any other questions? Is this making sense? Um, do your projects suffer from cowboy commissioning? What's been your experience on projects? Um, I see some of the comments of uh, from Dareth and David. Let me know others if you've had experiences on projects and if they've gone well or if they've fallen into the commissioning cowboy trap and uh, what the results have been. So let's start with the processes that are required for commissioning. I'll quickly go through the processes here. And then after this, we'll review how these processes are then modeled within commissioning software to manage your commissioning process. So there's three frameworks that are required for commissioning project management. We require our planning frameworks. Then we require our construction completion frameworks. And then the third group is our on-site commissioning and startup frameworks. And this is what makes up the integrated completions process. When you establish the integrated completion process earlier in your projects, everyone starts with the end in mind. They have a clear picture of what success looks like during commissioning. You're able to reduce the risks on your projects and you eliminate the chaos of cowboy commissioning at the end of your project. You can complete commissioning as efficiently as possible to know that you'll get to the end um, effectively. Saving your projects millions of dollars and months of schedule. And most importantly, when we follow and implement a commissioning system, we're able to deliver high quality systems that can be used for decades of reliable operation. However, when you're not following integrated completion processes, it may seem like you're making progress, of course, until your on-site testing starts, right? And then nothing works and things are missing and there's constant delays. You're losing time during commissioning and it's a scramble to get things finished at the end. You're faced with lots of costly delays and you end up with cowboy commissioning. Without integrated completions processes on projects, well, what do most people do to try and deal with this is they focus on design and they focus on construction because those are the two large groups that are involved in projects and commissioning is an afterthought. It's forgotten about and left to the end, right? They dump all the earlier design and construction problems on the commissioning guys and hope that they'll figure it out. <clears throat> but... All this does, of course, is defer all the risk on your project to the end of your project when there's no time to recover. This is, of course, what most projects do. They have their fingers crossed and they're hoping things will work at the end and that the commissioning guys will be the wizards and show up and sort it all out. But what really happens is the blame game starts and all the finger pointing comes out of what went wrong earlier and all your commissioning guys can do is point out the mistakes made earlier in your project, your claims, start to pile up and I guess the plan is to fight it out in court a few years later, right? But this is hardly a good approach to projects, even though this is what a lot of projects do. Um, some more comments. We're delayed and we're dragging and just waiting for our boss to tell what to do. Yeah. So again, that's a people process, right? And uh, a lot of projects try those people processes, but we need more effective processes to guide everybody on what's required here. 
So there is a better way. When you start your projects with the end in mind by implementing the integrated completions processes much earlier in your projects. But first, why is it called integrated completions process? Well, that's because commissioning project management must be integrated into all early stages of projects. We must have commissioning involved in our procurement processes, into our design processes to get uh, lessons learned and feedback incorporated earlier into our projects. Um, we need to have commissioning involved in construction and particularly involved in construction completions to make sure that construction items are being installed and to make uh, to meet quality requirements so that we have what we need for commissioning. So let's go through each of these frameworks um, that is required to set your project up for success um, and that these are the processes we'll, that will then be integrated into software that we'll go through here after. So the first element here is our planning frameworks. And there's 10 parts that are required here. And I'll quickly go through each one of them. You may be familiar with a lot of these, but if you're new to commissioning, then this will be uh, a good uh, overview as well. So the first element here is our contracts. When we're preparing engineering contracts and preparing construction contracts, we need to have critical commissioning inputs into our contracts to make sure that groups are being aligned on what's required for commissioning. And when we look at a lot of contracts, it's pretty light on commissioning details. Maybe some of your technical details are put in there, but they're pretty light on the commercial and project management aspects that are required for commissioning. A lot of people use contracts just to get the work started and don't use contracts as a tool to actually finish the job where we're defining how the software is going to be used, what are the static completion milestones, and the specifics of what's included in each of those. So these are the critical elements that need to go into contracts to make sure that the end of the project is also defined as well. When it comes to offsite testing in uh, factory acceptance testing, then those equipment procurement contracts, or at least defined in the contracts for the groups that are responsible for procuring equipment, know what's required for offsite testing so it aligns with our on-site uh, site acceptance testing, especially for more complex systems like uh, control and protection cubicles to be integrating software and hardware in the factory for the first time. So contracts are the first critical element to get right here for commissioning. The second aspect is our feed processes. So I'm sure you've been on a project that has gathered some lessons learned. Um, lots of projects do that, but a lot of projects are terrible at actually incorporating those lessons learned into the next projects. Well, this is the process to do that is all of the lessons learned from uh, construction, commissioning, and operation need to go back to our earlier phases of the project during our feed processes, during preliminary design reviews, during detailed design reviews. This is the time to get commissioning folks and operation folks involved here to incorporate those lessons learned and make sure that design packages that are being created a few years in advance are going to align with what's required for commissioning later in the project. And there might be some more detailed, specific design reviews that are required for, uh, say, your HMI screen reviews or more complex process control narratives. And how are these actually being defined? How are they being implemented so that we can get systems that are actually usable in the field later during commissioning and operations. So feed is a critical aspect to get uh, commissioning input in as well. The next item, in item is our factory acceptance test and our IFAT or our integrated factory acceptance test. So I'm sure you're familiar with a lot of the typical factory acceptance testing. We've been testing standard equipment like a pump in the factory for decades, nothing too concerning there, run the pump for a few hours, three points on the pump curve, those typical types of tests. But when it comes to integrated factory acceptance testing, it becomes a little bit more crucial because these are complex systems and only testing the hardware for a control and protection cubicle doesn't really help because the software is such a fundamental component of it. When projects try and do that software integration on site for the first time, it never goes well. So the projects that are succeeding are the ones that are implementing hardware and software in the factory for, um, for the first time so that we know that when these cubicles get to site, they're actually going to work for what we need. And that needs to be a priority to make sure that hardware and software are tested in the factory uh, in a simulated environment to verify these systems before they get to site. So the next element is our project systematization. We need to have our commissioning folks involved earlier in the project to systematize the project. And it's critically important because this is the fundamental building block for a systems-based approach for commissioning. 
uh, often the project systematization is done right before commissioning. Well, that doesn't align design with construction with commissioning in a systems-based approach. So this all comes together at the end. Remember the your startup sequence, it's a very specific sequence in how you're going to start up um, your plant process, right? You need power first before you can do the next system, before you can do the next system. There's a definite sequence of how it's going to be started up. And everything prior to that, um, that's the backbone that aligns all your project activities to know what's required for design, what's required for construction, what's required for commissioning to align up with your startup sequence. That's why we need to systematize our project early so that it's guiding all earlier activities to come together properly for our startup sequence and our commissioning activities that precede that. So then the next element is our gated commissioning workflows. Once we've systematized our projects, then how is each subsystem flowing through our gated commissioning process with regards to construction completions, with regards to pre-commissioning, commissioning and startup Um what are the milestones we're going to track and monitor? What are the handovers between each of these phases? What are the workflows that we're going to use for commissioning our systems? And it's always project specific, but when that's defined properly, then that guides each of the subsystems through our workflows for commissioning. So as we're developing a lot of this in our planning phases, then this um, eventually starts to come together and we can start defining this in our commissioning software. So our commissioning software is really our process to house all of our commissioning management processes. So our project systematization and our gated commissioning workflows, this is all implemented within our commissioning software. And this needs to be defined early because this is the guide, this is the communication tool that everyone's using on the project to um, have that vision of what success looks like during commissioning. When you're not using commissioning software, if you've got these details buried in a spreadsheet, then you've got some of the details and and maybe some of the others, but nobody on your project's ever gonna understand a spreadsheet. You need a, a tool to actually give people the visibility of what's required for commissioning, and that is your commissioning software. So then next, um, as we're further developing, we're going to be able to form our sequence of commissioning and um, dates and durations will give us our commissioning schedule. This is all loaded within our commissioning software as well, so that we can not only use our software to track everything, but also our work management system to generate checklists of when things need to be checked, who needs to check them, and how this all comes together for your gated commissioning workflows. Um, next item, you, I'm sure you're familiar with some of the forms and certificates that are required on commissioning. But when I say forms and certificates, these aren't paper documents. These are the forms or sign-offs or checks within the commissioning software to manage your gated commissioning sequence or your workflow. So what are the forms that are going to be using? And more importantly, who has the authority to sign off on each of those forms to indicate that subsystems have achieved that handover milestone and can move within the next phase of the workflows? Uh, checklists and procedures, you'd be familiar with those. We've been using checklists and procedures for decades, but these are actually implemented now within commissioning software. So there's no more paper spreadsheets to fill out in the field or procedures. This is all built uh, digitally within the commissioning software to um, manage and track and enter information right into the systems. And it becomes quite powerful when all of this is built into the systems because all this data that's being gathered is going to become even more powerful in the next few years as these AI tools get even better to be able to manage and track this information. I can only imagine how sophisticated this is going to get coming up in the next few years. And that's why we want all this information, all this data tracking in our systems, because uh, it's going to allow us a lot of opportunities coming up in the future. And then the last item here, not because it's the least important, but safety, of course, is uh, important when we're commissioning and starting up a lot of these systems. And the commissioning team is relied upon heavily as the equipment experts to make sure that these startups take place safely. So we need to be defining our PSSR processes in advance. We need to be defining and working closely with our HSE teams to make sure that we've got emergency response plans in place, that we've got test readiness review processes set up so that everyone has an opportunity to input into how these startups are going to take place and we can ensure that they all take place safely and that nothing gets missed. All right, so that's the first group of planning elements. The next uh, portion here is construction completions. And there's two uh, project management frameworks that are required here as well. So I'm sure you've been part of a lot of punch list walk downs, but this is the formalization of that within commissioning software to make sure that there's uh, a formal process and joint walkthroughs that are taking place between construction and commissioning 
and identifying any punch items and uh, categorizing them, loading them into software, and then actually identifying who's responsible for it, when it needs to be done, and what that specific action is to address that punch item. So software definitely helps track all of these because there's big punch items, there's small punch items, but when it comes to commissioning, every detail is important. Nothing can get missed. Everything needs to be tracked to um, make sure that this comes together. The second item in our construction completions frameworks is our subsystem static completion. And a lot of projects struggle with this is this is the very definitive definition line of what the goalpost actually is to complete for construction. The, the question always is how to transition from bulk construction to systems-based commissioning. And this is how you do that is by clearly systematizing your project, by clearly defining each static completion for each subsystem and system on your project, and by using software tools to keep track of each subsystem completion. Um, if you're doing this by any other way on spreadsheets, then you're only asking for trouble because that's always the discussion on projects, right? Is everybody's definition of done seems to mean something different, right? The commissioning guy's definition of done and the construction guy's definition of done, the design guys, the client, everybody's definition of done seems to mean something different, right? Everybody wants to get out of there and uh, get the job done. Um, but what does that actually mean? Well, this is the process to define that. When you define each static completion for each subsystem, the physical assets, the documentation that's required, everything down to the T, then the goalpost is crystal clear. There's no ambiguity. Everybody has a crystal clear vision of what's required to get through each of these milestones. It's all tracked and managed in software, and there's no guesswork. Everybody agrees and knows on what done actually means. Super, super effective, and it's the only way to complete projects. So then the last item here is our on-site commissioning and startup frameworks. And you'd be familiar with a lot of these to go through pre-commissioning, commissioning. So some people ask, well, what takes place during pre-commissioning? What takes place during commissioning? It doesn't really matter because we're going to define that all in the software and it's going to be specifically managed in there. But you can think of pre-commissioning as your equipment level testing to test the pump on its own by itself. Commissioning then becomes more of the, the subsystem or system-based item where we're looking for a group of tag pieces of equipment to work together to perform uh, a specific function. So test the pump on its own, but then test the chemical dosing system, say with the pump, the pipes, the valves, the automation control interface, everything as that subsystem, we would then be commissioning that as a particular subsystem or system. So then we'll move into startup, introducing plant processes for the first time or energizing our main circuit elements at 230 kV for the first time, whatever the particular electrical mechanical system is, moving into performance verification where we'll start fine tuning and adjusting some of the settings to make sure that the system's operating uh, optimally. And now that it's got process fluids or high voltage energizations, your contracts may have a trial operating period. In some cases, maybe there's a, a three day trial or a week operating period or a 30 day trial operation period where the system needs to operate uninterrupted for that period of time. If there's a unintended interruption, then that trial period starts over and it must get through that. To get to the end of the project where we can hand over the facilities or deem them um, suitable for commercial operation and uh, we can start putting some of the quest, uh, systems into service. Um, okay, so any questions here? Uh, we also have no allowance for commissioning on Tenders. Yep. That's always a challenge, right? And it it's a legitimate challenge because commissioning might be taking place two, three, four, five years later when some of these contracts are being awarded, right? The the thought isn't finishing the project. The thought is getting the project started, but they need to include both. You need to define how the project is going to get started and you need to define how the project is going to get finished. You're certainly not going to have all the technical commissioning details, but all of the commercial, all the project management aspects that are required for commissioning. We know all those and those need to go into contracts, even if all the technical details aren't available because designs are still being conducted. So it's it's a real challenge, but the focus needs to be on defining the end of the project as well as in contracts. Ron, uh, get out of my head. You're spot on with all this. Love that feedback, Ron. Uh, glad you're liking it. So everything that we went through on the screen here, you can see there's quite a bit involved for commissioning to be successful and spreadsheets or using the wrong commissioning software, they're just not able to do all of this. 
So if you're still using spreadsheets or you're using some crappy software that your IT department has forced you to use, but doesn't actually get the job done, it means one of two things. It means either you're doing everything on the screen by brute force, or it means you're probably not doing some or all of these activities at all, right? And neither of these situations is good for you because it's it's not good for you and your team. You're burning out a lot of good people when you're going through these brute for force processes to try and get your projects done. And it's driving a lot of people away from the industry. The, the young generations, they're just not going to accept this type of brute force. They're demanding a better way. And if you can't produce it, you don't have it. They're just going elsewhere, right? And it's not good for your projects because you're leaving all the risk to the end of your project during commissioning. And when that happens, we know how that turns out. We know that nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. So you just can't brute force this anymore using paper and spreadsheets or shitty software that is not going to get this done. You need the best tools to make sure that you can actually complete your projects. So let so that's the process that we went through. Now let's look at some of the software tools that you actually need for commissioning. When you use commissioning software on your projects, you can get rid of that brute force that's required to manually track um, commissioning in spreadsheets because it just doesn't work anymore. When you use the right software tool, everyone in your project has clarity on what's required for commissioning and you're able to complete commissioning much more efficiently. And when you can complete projects much more efficiently, you're of course save, saving a lot of time and a lot of effort to get your projects completed, which allows you to meet your project objectives on time and on budget. However, when commissioning software is not implemented correctly or you're using some wrong system that someone convinced you to use but doesn't actually have the fundamental underlying commissioning processes built into it, or worse, if you're still using paper and spreadsheets, then you're missing a lot of what's required to complete projects. And it just requires so much brute force, <laughs> which when you're trying to brute force this, that may or may not turn out good for you and your projects, but you just have no way to know, right? So what do project teams do to try and complete projects without some sort of system? Well, they try to manually track everything in Excel. Like we said, they've got their Excel macro that they've perfected over the last few years, and they think they're just fine with that. And they have a few people that are chunking through the spreadsheet and keeping things updated as best they can. <laughs> but Everyone is confused about what's required for commissioning because your spreadsheet's never going to show anybody a clear picture of what's required for commissioning and things get missed and nothing works in the end. And like I mentioned earlier, your spreadsheets are never going to attract young workers to the industry. They're demanding better ways to get the job done. They've got their phones, they've got their apps, they want to see projects that are progressing and using more modern systems to, to complete the work. They're not interested in your crappy spreadsheet to make their job more difficult, they're going to go down the street to the next guy where they're more advanced and using better systems. So the only way to stay relevant and increase project productivity is to take advantage of the sophisticated software tools that are available so that you can complete commissioning as efficiently as possible. And certainly to get ready for the advanced AI functions that we know are coming, right? It's everything in the media these days. And the construction industry isn't on the cutting edge, but we know that eventually these tools will come to the construction industry as well to, to use on our projects. And we need to be ready for these systems or we're going to get left behind. So you need to ask yourself, are you really going to be the last one that's still using Excel in five years from now? Um, <laughs> maybe that's your plan. I don't know. <clears throat> So the list that's on the screen, this is the list of the 25 plus different commissioning software vendors that are available. And some of these are great and some of these are actually complete crap. <laughs> some of these can't get the, jun the job done as well um, at all. So we've reviewed uh, each of these and we know which ones to use and which ones are best suited for each industries. <clears throat> So one thing to note is at the Commissioning Academy, we don't sell software. When we started putting this stuff together, we looked at, are we going to develop our own software or are we going to look at some of the vendors that are already out there? So we've never developed software and we don't intend to because there are already a few really good options on the market. So what we've done instead is we've partnered with the best software companies that are available and we know which ones to choose. So if you're building power projects or 
Um, even renewables, wind, solar, any of those items, there's a software that's ideal for that. Oil and gas has a few good options as well that are re uh, readily used in the market. Data centers, mining, uh, chemical manufacturing, which is huge for a lot of the EV battery pr production facilities that are being produced in the next uh, little while. Hospital airports, pharmaceutical, semiconductor, water treatment is huge, right? We all need water. <clears throat> There's a good software to use for each of these industries, and we've identified which one to choose. So we can tell you which one to you to use, and we can also tell you how to use it so that you can get it set up fast with your project-specific workflows. And then, of course, it's always a challenge. How are you going to onboard and train your teams to start using these systems? Well, we help you with that, too, is we'll train your team because we know the process specific tasks that each role on your project needs to do when they're interacting with some of these softwares. So if you'd like to get a copy of this list, you certainly can. It's at learncsu.com. If you go to that link, learncsu.com, scroll down to the bottom, there's a link there. You can download this list. You can get a copy of it and you can check it out. So these software tools are certainly a big piece of the equation. They're absolutely required on projects. They're just not the biggest piece of the equation because completing projects during commissioning is not fundamentally about software. It's about the process to actually complete your projects, right? So I don't want you to think you can just get one of these software systems and it will solve everything on your projects. All of these programs, they're all extremely flexible and out of the box. They're really a blank canvas that needs to be configured with specifically how you do your work. So we know that commissioning is complex and naturally the commissioning software is going to be complex as well. I don't, I just don't want you to feel like you're sitting in the cockpit of a 737 trying to get your commissioning software set up for your projects, right? Which is why we've set out to help projects get the best software and get this set up on their projects because it, it is a bit of a maze to navigate here. So even, even some of the projects that I see have gone and done this on their own. I see a lot of project teams that are just using their software incorrectly or have chosen a software that has a missing critical function where their software actually ends up hurting their projects more than helping their projects. Commissioning is complex and project teams need help to get commissioning systems set up correctly to know that you're using the right systems and that you have it optimized for use on your projects to get the best value from it. So that, of course, you can complete commissioning as efficiently as possible. That's, of course, the goal. Plus, a lot of projects don't have time to research software. You're busy. I don't know too many people that are sitting around on their thumbs uh, on projects looking for things to do. You don't have time to sit through two to three software demos or evaluate some of the options and, and pick the best one. You don't have time to fiddle around with learning software so you can get it set up on your projects. And you especially don't have time to generate training materials and onboard your team members to on how to use this software with the risk that it doesn't work, that the rollout is unsuccessful, they hate it, and they insist on going back to their paper and spreadsheets. We've seen that happen a lot of times too. So... For most organizations, we know that it can take six to 12 months before getting a commissioning system set up on their projects. And it's a bit of a daunting task. It's why a lot of projects are still using paper and spreadsheets because it's not easy to get the right software set up or risk getting stuck with uh, the wrong software. I've seen too many projects that they start using software and then they only realize six months uh, after the fact of putting a bunch of time and effort to get it all set up that it's not saving them any time and it doesn't meet their needs and they have to start the whole process over again, uh, six to 12 months to start searching for a new software and a better option because uh, they went down the wrong path. The thing about these software programs is if you have great commissioning processes, you'll love them. But if you have, uh, but if you don't have great processes, you'll absolutely hate this software because it won't help you. And most projects are not super process driven, right? By some of the comments we saw in the chat box, they're relying on people in the absence of process. So when there's when the process is missing, you can't just shove the people in the software. You need a process in the software to be, be Apple to be able to actually apply these systems to your projects in how you specifically do the work. So it's why we see a lot of projects struggle with their new software. And um, you've maybe heard this before, is we certainly don't want to take a bad commissioning process and digitize it, right? That's not going to help. That's only going to magnify the issues. 
And I don't want to see you get uh, stuck in this trap. So we make the transition to digital systems super easy for you. So you can stay focused on getting your projects done and not have to feel like you're stuck in this cockpit trying to figure out what to do. Uh, uh, hello, Mario. Good to see you here. Glad you can join. Okay, so these are the two common mistakes that are made on projects, leaving commissioning to the end of projects and still using paper and spreadsheets on projects. And these are the two main reasons why projects are struggling with commissioning. And if you fix just these two things, you'll already have made huge improvements on your projects. So I do have a quick case study that I'm going to share with you. I won't go through the details here. I'll send you the link after this presentation, but it's a comparison of these two power projects that took place in Canada roughly the same time. They're both HVDC projects. One took a very different approach to integrated factory acceptance testing than the other. Um, so watch for that link after this presentation. You can check it out. It's just a short little five minute video, but it'll show you some of the, the comparisons between those two projects. So we've covered a lot of good information today. We've talked about the commissioning processes to follow on your projects, and we've talked about the software tools that are required to manage commissioning. So let me know in the chat, is this making sense? Can you get these commissioning processes set up on your projects? Do you know the commissioning software that you need to start using? And can you start getting it set up um, to use on your projects? And if this is all making sense, then... What are you going to do on Monday? How are you going to get these two items in place on your projects? How can you start getting some momentum to get the processes you need, get the software you need so that you can start helping your projects succeed during commissioning? What I've given you today are the commissioning tools and processes that successful project teams are using to complete commissioning as successfully and efficiently as possible. What I've given you are the commissioning tools and processes. If you want to avoid making costly mistakes on your projects, you want to avoid missing steps in your commissioning process and be less reliant on the people process. You want to avoid using outdated paper and spreadsheets. You want to be able to use some of these more modern advanced systems to help you on projects. And you want to avoid the scramble at the end of your projects. Of course, this all sounds good. This is what we all want on our projects, right? We want to be able to complete commissioning as efficiently as possible to make our jobs easier. We want to follow the industry best practices for commissioning so that we know that we're following the right steps and de-risking our projects. We want to be using the best software uh, on our projects to help us get the job done. And we want to be able to make a real impact on projects because there's a lot of projects that are required over the next few decades for electrification, for climate change, for all the um, initiatives that are required. And I, I heard some crazy stats, like there's something like $100 trillion that needs to be spent in the next few decades to address some of these uh, initiatives and capital projects are a huge part of that. We need to be doing these projects more efficiently and effectively because there's a lot of work ahead of us. Um, uh, Alan is saying, yeah, this is making sense. Now we need to get my service manager on board. Service manager will naturally want to know the cost will be to start this process. Absolutely. Yep. So let's have a chat, Alan. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know how you can book a call. If you want to bring your service manager to it, we can have a chat with him as well. We can get him on board to show how this all works and what it looks like uh, so that we can get you set up with the right stuff. So um, I guess there's, there's really two choices that you have here, right? Is you can continue with cowboy commissioning, which we know doesn't work. Nine out of 10 projects are late and over budget. Uh, you can continue with your paper and spreadsheets, or you can just outright refuse to adapt to do projects a better way, right? I still remember my last friend that refused to give up his BlackBerry, and he used it right to the very end until we had to pry it out of his hands and force him to get an iPhone. There's always just those um, stubborn some people or groups that... Uh, just refuse to keep up with the times, right? <laughs> you can spend the next six to 12 months trying to figure this out on your own, and you'll probably spend between 50 or 100K uh, internally to, to figure this out. It, it typically does take, we find, uh, six to 12 months for companies to get this set up on their own, and um, 50 to 100K is, is easily spent by the time you attend two to three software demos or spend some time converting your checklist to a digital format, or maybe you don't have checklists and you need to create them in the software in the first place. There's time to do that. 
um, configuring your workflows that are specific to your projects that all gets loaded into the software. Generating training material is a is a huge effort working with your HR departments to try and roll this out. Um, it can be a nightmare to get uh, systems set up and get your teams actually use them. It's a big job and it's it's why it's hard for organizations to make this change, right? It's why organizations are are stuck with their paper and spreadsheets because there's never been an easy option or um, someone they can go to to say, let's get this done. We need help doing this. Some some people we talk to, they've talked about it or thought about it for two, three, four years. They know they need to do this, but it's just um, uh, the corporate machine is a challenge, right? And they just need help to get through and get it done. So uh, that's what we help with. And um, we certainly don't want to get uh, have you get stuck with the wrong software. If you go through this process internally and then six to 12 months later realize you have to start over because you need uh, a new software system, it's common. I was I was talking to a group that spent a lot of time and effort getting their new software system set up. And now they're going around saying that, that they hate it, that they're looking for a new software system. And they're openly, openly saying this to people. It's it's crazy. It's, uh, it's just uh, a huge huge waste to see that happen when people don't get set on the, the right foot in the first place here. So the second option is you can get the best commissioning software for your projects right now. You can start using your new CMS software in only a few weeks. It doesn't need to take months. You can get software set up in a fraction of the cost um, than trying to do this on your own when you, when you get our help. Um, you can get your team trained and using your system ASAP, knowing you're following a reliable and proven rollout method to get your team, your individuals on board with using some of these systems. And I guess the most important thing is because time is so valuable on projects, you can stay focused on getting your projects done, knowing that you've got someone under control to make this happen for you. So when you go with option number two and you get some help to get this figured out, we can save you several months of time and we can save you tens of thousands of dollars rather than trying to do this on yourself, rather than trying to get commissioning software um, set up on your own. You get a custom solution that exactly meets your project needs, your specific industry, your specific project in how you specifically do your commissioning workflows on your projects. You can try to get commissioning software set up on your own, but it, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, we can get you set up with the best software and it only needs to take a few weeks at a fraction of the cost of trying to get this figured out on your own. And we do this all the time. We know how to do it right. We know the systems to use. We know the processes to follow and how it all gets loaded in there. And you're busy. You, do, you need to stay focused on getting your projects completed. You don't have time to research software. And we do this every day. We get you results fast for a fraction of the cost to do it on your own. So what you really need is someone to tell you which software to use because it's proven and we know that it can meet your needs. Uh, you need someone to get it set up for you with your project specific workflows and you need someone to provide the custom training specific to your project to get your, train, your team trained fast. So doesn't that sound easier than trying to get this figured out on your own? If you want a turnkey commissioning system to get the industry best commissioning software for your projects, to get all your checklists created and loaded into your software so that you can get a custom solution with all your project specific workflow, workflows for exactly how you do your work and get a custom training package to train your entire team, then it's finally actually super simple to make this transition to better systems for commissioning. And all you have to do is go to learncsu.com, click on the big purple button. You can tell us a little bit about your projects and schedule a time to meet and we can chat about how we can get you set up. Um, okay, some comments here from Jacob. We've switched from Excel to online software and it has been beneficial to communicate through issues process. Now the trick is getting contractors to complete the checklist. Yep. So it's it's sometimes a bit of an evolution process is your first iteration may not have contractors fully plugged into it because contracts are already written. And uh, as you know, if it's not in the contract, then it's not going to happen, right? But the next iteration when contracts are written differently to include how these processes work, um, it builds up and gets better because the next contract you award is going to include some of these processes and static completion definitions and how this is going to work. When contracts have that definition in there, then you can start getting contractors to complete some of the checklists in the systems as well. So it's sometimes a stage process for sure to to get to a full implementation of some of these systems. Um, uh, I've joined the live webinar from the start. It makes really a lot of sense. For sure, it will really get a lot 
uh, help for our team and company. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, our eyes are for opening our eyes to this. I'm excited to improve the commissioning of water treatment plants more efficiently. Absolutely. Yep. And let us know how we can help you for sure. Um, yep. Uh, we'll be in touch. Uh, Ron, good to have you here. All right. So what we've got here is perfect for companies that want to save time and money on projects so that they can get the best commissioning systems for the projects. Um, we can save, save you some time and money getting this set up rather than to try and figure this out on your own, because it is a bit complex to, to navigate which software to choose and how to get it all set up. If you want a proven process to get software systems set up on your projects, then uh, we're a good option to, to help you out. We know people working on projects are busy. So um, if you know you need better commissioning systems for your projects, but you just haven't been able to get it done, you've talked about it for a while, then this is a perfect option for you to actually get some help and, and get it done to navigate some of this and make it as pain-free as possible. Um, when you give us your checklist, we digitize all of those for you. Or if you're starting from a blank sheet of paper and you need someone to write all your checklists, we've got team uh, members that are standing by and can crank out the electrical items, mechanical items, whatever you need for checklists to get those loaded into the software. And um, you can tell us how you want to systematize your project. When you give us that information in return, what you get is a fully functional digital system that's ready to use on your commissioning projects. Um, simplifies things significantly. So not only do we give you a turnkey commissioning software solution, we also train your team on how to use the system. So we give you all the training material and you get to keep that. You can train your team for uh, right now, or if someone joins the project in six months from now, you've got all the training material. You can onboard new people as they come and go from the projects because we know, we always know that's the case, right? Um, and most importantly, when you get these systems set up on your projects, you're able to complete commissioning much more efficiently. So you might be thinking, well, how can we possibly do this for your projects? Your projects are unique, right? And they require specialized process as well. Your, prob your projects probably aren't as unique as you think, unless you're building something, say like the James Webb Space Telescope that's brand new and never been done before, it's very likely that your projects have been done before. There's power projects that are all over the world. There's There's water projects, LNG facilities, these are not new systems. They've they've been around for, for many decades, right? So if you're hesitant and you think, well, how can someone else figure this out? Book a call. Let's have a chat. And uh, I'll explain to you how the process works, how the information that we actually need from you and how we assemble this and put it together. Um, because the, the process definitely applies to all different types of projects. Um you know, you know, you can't use your spreadsheets forever. Um, you know that you have to adapt to new technology. So are you going to do that now? Or are you going to do that in two, two years from now, five years from now? Are you going to be the last one still using Excel? Um, I guess it's up to you, but technology is moving more and more at a faster rate with a lot of the AI tools that we are here are talked about that I think it's going to start moving a lot faster. So I wouldn't wait and think we can do this later. You need to do it now. <laughs> um. So really, the, some of these new technologies, they've existed for a few years, but they're getting pretty uh, sophisticated and advanced. And the technologies of the future, they're, they're coming whether the construction industry is ready or not. So I really don't want you to be the last one still using paper and spreadsheets on your projects. Go to learncsu.com. Tell us a little, about your, uh, a little bit about your projects and uh, select a time to meet. We'll have a chat. We'll see how we can get you set up here quickly and easily as pain-free. So commissioning software certainly makes completing projects so much easier to save time and money completing projects. And every project should have a robust commissioning system, which is why we've made this a no brainer. Our team does this every day and can get you set up with the best commissioning software in only a few weeks at a fraction of the cost um, than if you try and figure this out on your own. So you'd really be crazy. If you want to go down the, the do-it-yourself path, you certainly can. And some people still choose that, but it really doesn't make any sense when you can uh, get some help to get through this and navigate the complexities of, of this to get your systems set up for you. And we've, we've made it super simple so that you can finally get a world-class commissioning system on your project. So go to learncsu.com right away and click the big purple button, we can have a chat. So I briefly mentioned this before. There's, there's really no reason to try and get commissioning software set up on your own on projects, not when we can save you months of effort and save you tens of thousands of dollars. And 
we know how to meet your project specific needs with a system that is actually going to, that you're going to be happy with still any year from now. If you want to do this on your own, it does typically take six to 12 months to go through it and 50, 100K or more. It's, it's difficult really to get consistency on your projects when you're project to project and don't have a standard method of, of how to set this up. And you can try to convince your team to use software um, with your own rollout or own training methods, and maybe they will, or maybe they'll resist it and they'll hate it and they'll want to go back to their paper and, and spreadsheets. And you'll have to start the whole process over in a year from now when you realize that your software isn't uh, what you thought it was, or uh, the demo you sat through the sales pitch um, promised you more than the software could actually do. So when you get our help, our team can get you set up fast with industry leading software, a fraction of the cost to do this on your own. You get uh, the same workflows across all your projects. If you work on multiple projects at the same time, then um, if you try to get one guy to set it up and then the next guy to set it up, you may or may not have consist consistency across all projects. But when, when we're helping you out, then that guarantees assist consistency across all of your projects, which is super helpful if you've got resources that are going from one project to the other. Everything makes sense because everything's the same. Um, it's just it's just easier to manage uh, multiple projects whenever, when you have a standardized commissioning process. We give you that role-specific training that shows exactly what that role needs to do. So we're not going to make people sit through an hour uh, training for a bunch of crap they don't actually need. Here's the very specific 10 minute training that um, say the commissioning tech needs. This is how you log into the system. This is how you access your inspection check sheets. This is how you're loading information. This is how you're returning it back into the software. And this is how you're submitting it for a review. That's all that role needs. That's all the training that they need to go through. It needs to be very focused and specific with exactly how people need to get their job done. So when you get our help, you're guaranteed a successful improvement to your commissioning processes, knowing that you're getting a proven method to implement the best commissioning software for your project. So it's really a no brainer um, to get us to help you out um, because then you know the process is going to be successful and you can focus on getting your projects done, knowing that you're getting the best software that's going to help you on your project. So go to learncsu.com right away and uh, get started. So, uh, Dareth, what is the cost? So that always depends on um, your project size. So there's a software cost that varies depending on how much data you've got on your projects. Um, there's a cost, obviously, to get us to help you to set this stuff up. But book a call and we'll look at what your uh, specific project needs are. And we'll certainly get into all those details. Um, Alexander, yeah, we'll uh, catch you later. Thanks for joining. Can these CMS CSU processes be applied to turnaround and maintenance, outage scope development, execution, and startup? Absolutely, yep. And a lot of these systems are specific for that because um, your your turnaround or your, your maintenance outage, a lot of very specific activities need to happen within that window, right? And everything needs to be planned out in a lot of detail. So these systems are fundamental to making sure that that actually takes place. Like I said earlier, if, you, if you've got an outage window, you need to know um, the activities that are taking place Tuesday morning are actually completed by three o'clock because if they're not, that's going to screw up your Wednesday. And you need to know that. You need to be able to track that in real time. And you just can't do that with spreadsheets. These systems give you that visibility to be able to do that. Um, nice to know there are people that have already test run a lot of these software options. Yep. And we can help you out and get you set up with a good one as well. So there is a reason that people come to us for these commissioning systems, because we know how to set them up properly and we have certainty in what we're doing. And the systems we implement are clear, concise, and they actually work. They produce results for you on projects. And what I've noticed is you can literally change the entire trajectory of your projects when you have clear and concise systems to finish commissioning. And that's what we want to help you get set up. So if you're serious about commissioning on your projects, or you're at least pissed off and tired of projects ending up late and over budget, go to learncsu.com, click the big purple button, and we'll get you started. Now, if you do have all of this figured out on your projects, and this is exactly what you're doing, you're using the best processes and you have the best software tools 
then please keep up the great work because we need more people like you to help us complete projects in the next several decades and $100 trillion. We need people that understand this expertise and can, can deliver projects successfully. However, we know that a lot of project teams have not figured this stuff out because we know that nine out of 10 projects are still late and over budget, right? So these are the projects that we want to help so that you can end up on the better side of these statistics rather than just being another project that's late and over budget that we hear about in the media that's struggling to finish projects. So save some time and effort and go to learncsu.com and we'll get you set up with what you need for commissioning. So to conclude, we must be doing our part to make sure that commissioning is successful by getting better systems for commissioning and we're here to help you get the best systems you need for your commissioning success. Awesome. So I've got some time for some Q&A. So please ask any questions in the chat window. I see there's a few here. So um, David, I'm not the decision maker in my project, but was looking for training on best practices, et cetera. Is there more training beyond your mini course that I can enroll in, in time? I may have influence on which CMS software to use. Yep. We do have our, uh, certificate in commissioning project management program as well. You can go to our website and check it out. It's listed there. Uh, go to commissioning and startup.com. There's a page that you'll find for our Commissioning Academy. There's a little button there you can click on and submit your application. We'll check it out. And if everything checks out, then we can uh, approve your application to get access to um, the course costs and curriculum and all that good stuff. And you can have a look at that and see if it's uh, what you need. So by all means, certainly check that out as well. So if there is any more questions, certainly shoot them in the chat. There are a few common questions that I get at this point in the in the at this point in the presentation. So I'll um, I'll cover those here as well, and maybe they'll be helpful. So some people ask, well, why do I need commissioning software? Our spreadsheets have been working just fine for us, and I suspect that's likely the case because you're relying a hundred percent on people, right? In the in the absence of any process, then you need to rely on people. And that's why you've probably always heard on projects that we need commissioning experts with experience that know how to do this stuff. Well, that's because there's no process. We still need commissioning as experts. Absolutely. We need people that have done this before and that have started up a 230 KV high voltage system because um, people with experience are the only ones that can do that. You'll never learn how to do that in a course, but we also need a process to guide everybody else on the project so that that high voltage test expert has what they need when they get to that point in the project. So um, if you're still relying 100% on the people process, that's not going to get you very far. When your good people retire, which we know that they're doing, or they move on to other projects, then you've got nothing except your old outdated spreadsheets, right? And uh, you're certainly not going to be able to take on more work and work on multiple projects to take um, more of a piece of this $100 trillion work that's ahead of us here. Um, you're not going to be able to take on any of that work because you, you'll never find the people. You don't have the process. It's just not possible to find some of these skilled people that we're going to need on projects, right? Um, we need to have the people, but we also need to have the process um, because the process enables the good people to do their best work. So the only way you'll be able to continue with any success on projects or grow and expand and, and take on more work is with better systems to manage commissioning. So if you're convinced your, your spreadsheets can get you through all of that, give it a shot. But um, the world is changing fast and we need to be using these better systems. Uh, the world need lot clear water projects around the world. Every, every city has got multiple water projects around, right? There's the water ind industry is huge. Um, I'm helping a, a water project right now, not too far away from here. So certainly lots of the, lots of challenges on water projects um, for sure. So some people ask me at this point, well, why do I need commissioning project management? Isn't this all covered when you get uh, your PMP and you're certified? Well, <laughs> if you go look at any of PMI's information, it's pretty light on details to finish capital projects. PMI covers how to start a project. It briefly covers some topics on quality management, but there is nothing in there on the processes or tools that are required to finish capital projects or how to manage that process. Um, the stuff we help people with just isn't included in PMP. And I think this is why there's so much confusion about commissioning in the industry is because 
finishing capital projects during commissioning just isn't taught to project managers. There's systems and controls for commissioning are really what's the missing part required to actually finish projects. So we certainly need the PMP processes to get projects started, but you also need the, the commissioning systems and processes and project management to finish projects, which is everything that we have included here for our commissioning academy programs and services that we offer. Um, so really, when I look at PMI stuff, it's great that you can start a project, but wouldn't you agree that finishing the project is actually the most important part. It's pretty irresponsible to start a project with having no idea how to finish it. Um, and it, it it eats me up to the core when I see these projects that are putting out millions or billions of dollars and have no idea how to finish it during commissioning. It's just, it's, it's unethical, especially when it's taxpayer dollars to see this going out the door because people aren't planning for how to finish projects uh, properly. So please don't fall into that trap thinking uh, that uh, your PMP is going to get you through this because there's more to it than that. People ask me, does this apply to all industries? Now, there is a distinction between technical commissioning and commissioning project management. All projects, of course, do technical commissioning differently, right? Every project has unique technical circumstances, the specific breakers to close and the valves to open. They're always project specific and the technical commissioning aspects are never the same on two projects, even two projects within the same industry. The technical commissioning is always different because it's equipment specific, right? However, the processes and the software tools for commissioning project management, this applies to all industries, regardless of the technical commissioning details. It's the same risk mitigating steps that we've discussed today that need to be taken on all capital projects in all industries without exception. It's always the same risk-based approach to manage commissioning so that your project specific technical testing goes later, goes better later in your project. So the commissioning management principles that we use and apply on a project on projects, these apply to all complex projects, be it a process system, an energy system, really any complex project that involves mechanical, electrical, and automation equipment that needs to come together as one system at the end of the project. So to answer the question, yes, this commissioning project management principles that we discussed here, the software systems and the processes to follow. This applies to all industrial plant processes. Um, and another question I often get is, well, yeah, this all sounds good, but you're busy and you don't have time to look at this right now. And I totally get it. Project's life is busy. And when you say you're busy, I agree with you. You're busy. You're getting several hundred emails a day. You're busy. Project's life is busy, but that's that's why we're here because we know you're busy and that's why we've put together uh, our commissioning academy assistance here is to get you the help you need so that you can actually get this done is we take care of all the details so that you can actually get this done on your projects so you can stay focused on your projects knowing that you're actually going to upgrade and get better systems and processes for commissioning because um when you're when you're busy on projects, there's often no way that it's going to happen unless you get some sort of help to make this happen, right? So if you need that help to get this done on your projects, go to learncsu.com and and get the help you need. I know a lot of uh, technical people, engineers, it's, it's our nature. We want to figure things out on our own, right? Um, I'm exactly like that as an electrical engineer. I, I solve problems and figure things out, right? But when there's just so much going on on projects, it's not always possible and you need to stay focused on your projects. So don't hesitate to reach out and get the help you need um, so that you can get the systems and processes you need for your commissioning to be successful. Because we really don't want your project to be six months late and millions of dollars over budget because you just couldn't get this done and you ignored commissioning until it's too late. So um, by all means, we're here to help make your project successful. Okay. So um, I don't see any more questions in the chat. So uh, lots of good questions. I appreciate it. Let's end it here for now. Um, go to learncsu.com. Please click on that big purple button and tell us a little bit about your projects and we'll get you help. Well, um, you need to get set up with the systems and processes you need for commissioning. So also after this presentation, watch your email. Um, I will send you a link to this replay. You saw that it was recording there at the beginning. I'll send you that link to the replay so you can watch it again. Or um, there were some comments in here about their uh, um, project managers or other 
individuals in the project, if you want to send them that link to uh, the replay, by all means, share it with them so they can check this out as well. I will send you a link to um, the commissioning case study that I talked about. Um, you can check that out. And I'll also send you a link if you want to join our next live webinar. I do this every Friday. So by all means, come back or someone send, send someone else to check it out and, and they can hear some of this stuff as well to see how to get their projects uh, tuned up for commissioning as well. And the link that's on the screen, I will send you an email with that link as well. So you can contact us, ask us any questions, and so you can start getting your projects set up for commissioning success. So I appreciate the feedback. Um, David, great presentation. Demetrius, great presentation. You guys have a great weekend as well. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate comments and discussions. Um, we're here to help you get your projects set up for commissioning success. So I'm glad to have you here and have a great weekend as well. Bye for now.